Hello, my name is Otto Kruse, and I'm a senior solutions developer at AWS. In this video, I will show you how you can add passwordless authentication to your web and mobile apps with Amazon Cognito. Many users like passwordless authentication, such as signing in with Face ID or Touch ID, as they don't have to remember passwords in that case. It can also be more secure. Elaborate research has shown that inadvertent data access events, where threat actors gain access to companies' data, are very costly. Such events cost companies no less than $4.35 million on average in 2022. Research suggests that the majority of companies will face such an inadvertent data access event at one point in time. Most inadvertent data access events are caused by threat actors who manage to get their hands on valid credentials. They use these credentials to access the company's systems. These inadvertent data access events are also the hardest to identify and more costly to remediate. A common way threat actors manage to steal credentials is by phishing. Phishing is a form of social engineering where threat actors deceive people into revealing sensitive information or installing malware. Be on your guard and don't think that you will never fall for phishing. There have been cases of top engineers working at top companies that fell for phishing. These cases evidence that it can happen to anyone. If you don't use passwords to sign in, you're also not at risk of your password being stolen. This is why many organizations are now looking to move to passwordless authentication. Especially, organizations are looking at using phishing-resistant credentials. These are credentials that are designed to be impossible to steal. I'll talk more about this later. Use Amazon Cognito to add authentication to your customer-facing applications. Amazon Cognito helps you implement secure, frictionless customer identity and access management that scales. Amazon Cognito supports custom authentication flows, which give you the possibility to create passwordless authentication flows. To make it easier for customers to add passwordless authentication to their applications that use Amazon Cognito, AWS published the Amazon Cognito Passwordless Authentication Solution. This is a reference implementation of passwordless authentication with Amazon Cognito that you can run as is and use as inspiration for further development of your own. It supports several forms of passwordless authentication. It supports FIDO2 or WebAuthn, which is a set of open standards developed by the FIDO Alliance. FIDO2 is designed to be phishing resistant. It uses public key cryptography to authenticate users which involves creating public-private key pairs. The private key is stored securely on the user's device, while the public key is registered with the online service. When the user attempts to authenticate, their device generates a cryptographic signature that can be verified using the registered public key. FIDO2 supports a range of authentication methods, including biometric authentication, such as fingerprint or facial recognition, hardware tokens, such as USB security keys, and platform authenticators, such as Windows Hello or Apple's Touch ID. Besides FIDO2, the AWS passwordless solution also supports signing in with magic links. To sign in, users enter their email address and then a one-time use secret sign-in link is emailed to them. This is a convenient sign-in method that doesn't require using a password but it is not phishing resistant and therefore we recommend to use it as a fallback mechanism and to encourage users to use FIDO2 instead. I will now demonstrate the AWS passwordless solution. The solution includes both backend and frontend code. For the backend it has a CDK construct that includes everything you need to add passwordless authentication, such as predefined lambda triggers for your user pool, two DynamoDB tables, a KMS key and API gateway. The CDK construct has many parameters with which you can customize the deployment. For the frontend, the solution has JavaScript functions and pre-built sample React components and hooks that work with the backend. The end-to-end -end example that I'll deploy in this video will deploy a CDK stack with the solutions construct. The stack also includes a CloudFront distribution and S3 bucket 
where I will upload the sample web application to with which we can demonstrate the sign-in process. For this demo, I will clone the solution from GitHub to my local machine and deploy the end-to-end -end example that is included in the solution to my own AWS account. The end-to-end -end example has two parts. First, I will deploy the backend, which is a CDK stack, and then I can run the frontend against that backend. To deploy the backend, I must meet the prereqs mentioned. One important prereq is that you need to have a verified SES identity to use as from address for the magic link emails. Furthermore, if you are still in the SES sandbox, which you are by default, you must also verify all email addresses that you want to send emails to. I will now clone the solution from GitHub to my local machine and deploy the end-to-end -end example. All these steps are also explained in the README. After cloning, I change directory to the end-to-end -end example CDK directory. I install dependencies, which includes installing the solution from NPM. And since this will take a few moments, let me pause the recording while this runs. The NPM install has completed. Now, as the README explains, I must create an env local file and enter the email address that magic link should be sent from. To keep this demo speedy, I've already done that and this is what that file looks like. I will bootstrap the AWS account for CDK. You only need to do this once in an account for each region that you want to use with CDK. As you can see in this case, I already bootstrapped the account earlier. Okay, so let's deploy the end-to-end -end example CDK stack. As you saw, this was pretty quick because I already deployed this stack earlier while the video was paused to keep this demo speedy. Otherwise, this would take a few minutes. Note the CloudFormation outputs displayed. We will need these values in the next step where we will deploy and run the frontend. Let's deploy the frontend now. Take note of the SPA URL CloudFormation output. That's where we can access the sample web app once deployment is done. I navigate to the client directory and install dependencies there. After that, we have to create an env local file again, like we did for CDK deployment also, and we'll use the CloudFormation outputs that I showed you earlier in that file. Now, I already created this file in the background while the video is paused, and I'll sh just show you now what that file looks like for me. Okay, so let's build the web app and deploy it to S3. One final thing to do before we can run the demo is to create a test user to sign in with. So let's do that now. Navigate to Cognito in the AWS console and create a test user there. Remember, if you're still in the Amazon SES sandbox, then you need to verify this email address there also. Let's generate the password because we don't use the password anyway. Okay, we're ready to run the demo now. Let's sign in with our test user. Since we didn't create any FIDO2 credentials yet for the test user, the only way we can sign in with this user is by using a magic link. So let's do that. I will pause the recording momentarily while we wait for the email to be sent to us. Okay, the magic link is in. Let's click it and sign in. There we go, we've successfully signed in with the magic link. Now what you see here is of course a sample web application and if you would use this solution, this would be where you would see your web app instead. What you see here at the top right is our prefab React component that makes it easy for users to add FIDO2 credentials so they can set up Face ID or Touch ID to sign in with. Let me do that right now. I'm on a MacBook and MacBooks support Touch ID, so let's set that up. This is where I touch my MacBook on the Touch ID spot. 
I need to provide a name, so let's type MacBook. That's it, and FIDO2 Touch ID has now been activated. Let's see it in action. I'll sign out. You'll notice the sign in page looks a little different now because our prefab React component remembers the last user and offers now to sign in with face or touch. So let do, let's do that. Touching my MacBook again. And I'm in. I'll conclude this demo with quickly showing the Authenticator Manager, which is another prefab React component that is part of the solution that shows all the registered FIDO2 credentials for the user at hand and can be used by the user to register other FIDO2 credentials so they can sign in with those as well. That concludes this video. We have seen how you can add passwordless authentication to your applications with Amazon Cognito and the open source passwordless solution. I've demonstrated FIDO2 sign-in using Touch ID on my MacBook, but that would work very similar without needing any changes to the code with Windows Hello, YubiKey and on your Android or iOS mobile phone. Many modern devices support FIDO2. I've also demonstrated magic links to you but you should favor FIDO2 if you can, as it is phishing resistant. Use the open source passwordless solution as inspiration for your own sign-in implementations with Amazon Cognito. And have fun building!